Today is Freezer Friendly Friday. Yay! Well, today's Wednesday when I'm filming this, but this is uh, Freezer Friendly Friday episode. I believe this is four, three or four. I got. I, I need to write these down, guys, so I can remember them. But anyways, so today I'm doing. Um, this is not really a um, freezer recipe. You know, it's not something that I found that said it was uh, for a freezer, but I'm turning it into a freezer recipe for you guys. So it is uh, low carb um, Philly cheesesteak. Hold on, let me see what it's, I can't remember what it's called. I know it's low carb Philly cheese cheese steak. Let's see. Uh huh. Philly cheese steak stuffed peppers. That's what it is. Low carb. So if you like Philly cheese steak, but you're low carb or you, you know for some reason you can't have the bread or you just don't want the bread, then this is the go-to for you guys. So I'm going I'm not going to fit this is a recipe that's not going to be finished completely before it goes in the freezer but it's only one little simple step when you take it out of the freezer to put it in your oven to cook it um, so uh, I'm gonna get started and show you guys the first step that you need to do all right first things first you need to get your uh, mushrooms you need to get your mushrooms and your onions chopped uh, well the mushrooms you slice them this was a 16 ounce uh, package of mushrooms just your uh, white button mushrooms and then that is one uh, medium sized onion it is chopped uh, first thing you need to do is you need to put your mushrooms in your skillet and let those cook until they're slightly brown and then you add your onions to that and let those cook until they're slightly brown and add your salt and pepper uh, salt and pepper just to taste that's in uh, so I'm gonna get those in the uh, skillet and get those cooking and while they're cooking I'm gonna show you guys how you need to uh, get your peppers cut up and ready for to be stuffed Now, you want to get, while I'm letting my uh, mushrooms and onions cook, I'm going to get my peppers prepped and get those ready to uh, be stuffed. So, here's what you need to do. Take the center out, just like that. And then you want to get those ribs and seeds out. Alright, then your next step is you want to slice them in half, just like that. I'm going to trim a little bit of that off. Just because that was... Uh, not any good and that's what you want you want them just like that slice in half let me show you another one so you take the center out Take the ribs out and the seeds. Then you slice them in half, just like that. See? And the pepper, the better that it is, see how that one is more, you know, is deeper. Uh, the deeper that it is, the more filling it's gonna hold. So uh you know, if you the bigger the pepper, the more filling it's gonna hold. 
Uh, if you want to do these, I'll tell you how I do when I make like just regular stuffed peppers. Um, you know, like with the rice and I use chicken, but you can use beef, whatever, you know, how, just regular stuffed peppers like you can, uh, or you can buy them in the freezer department, you know, that's already stuffed. Uh, but anyways, so the way that I do those is I just cut this top off and then that's it. I, just, I take the ribs and the seeds out and I leave them whole just like that and I stuff it. If you want to do that like this, that's totally fine. It's up to you, whatever you want to do. All right, now that I've got those uh, cut up the way that I want them, I'm going to take them over to the sink and I'm going to clean them up. And then they will be ready for, <laughs> they'll be ready for the stuffing. All right, guys, so my mushrooms are cooking away. And what I've done was I just added a little bit of olive oil in my skillet. And then I added my mushrooms to it. Uh, you can use you can use uh, mine's extra virgin olive oil. You can use that. You can use butter. You can use a mixture of olive oil and butter. Uh, butter is really good to cook mushrooms in. I I re that's used normally. That's what I would cook mine in. But I'm out of butter right now, so that's why I'm just using olive oil. It's grocery week, guys. Can you tell? <laughs> when it gets grocery week, it's like slim pickings around here. Which I say that, but my butter doesn't come from the grocery. But uh, I got to get some. Alright guys, so those are going to cook uh, until they get slightly brown. Um, and then you want to add your onion to that and cook it until it's slightly brown. And then you want to add your salt and pepper. That's just to taste. Ever, It's your preference. If you don't want to add salt and pepper, don't add it. Totally up to you. Uh, and then uh, it will be time to get the meat, the steak, uh, cooked up. And so I'll bring you guys back when... I get this done, and I'm ready for to get the steak on the cook. Let you, and then I'll show you the mushrooms and the onions, how they look when they're done. All right, y'all. So, I got my mushrooms and my onions cooked. And uh, I'll show you what those look like. Here. Ooh, plate hot. All right. There's my onions and my mushrooms. Guys, they smell so good. Who else out there loves onions and mushrooms together? Yeah. Alright, so I got those cooked up. So now I'm going to get my meat cooked. Um, what I've got is, uh, it's called beef bottom round steak uh, for stir fry. It's just thin slices of steak. If you'd rather have some other kind of steak, you can totally buy a steak or multiple steaks, however much of this you're going to make. Um, this is a pound uh, of meat. That's what the recipe calls for. So um, that's what I got. But if you want to, if you're making more, you know, whatever. If you like a whole lot of meat, you use what you like, the amount that you like, you know, and the kind of uh, meat that you like. I mean, if you wanted to put chicken, if you wanted to make Philly cheese chicken, those would be good instead of beef. You can put chicken in it. Totally. Sounds really good. <laughs> uh, but anyways, so I'm going to get this. This has been set now coming to room temperature. Uh, or not room temperature. But, you know, getting the chill off of it. Uh, you want to do that before you add your meat to your skillet. Honestly, I can't remember exactly why you want to do that. But it's another, like I, I used to watch Food Network like all the time. And learn a lot of things on there and that's another thing that uh, the chefs on there has said that when you're cooking meat you want to get it uh, you know take the chill off of it 
I don't know why. I really don't. <laughs> I don't remember. But anyways, so I put a little bit more olive oil in my skillet, and now I'm going to get my uh, steak in there and get it cooked up. And for reference, in case you are, you know, get your own steak and you want to cut it, that, you can see how thin that is. That's what you want. Now, for me, since I'm putting this in the freezer, and I'm going to be cooking it again when it comes out of the freezer, and I'm going to put it in the oven to, you know, defrost it, get it hot and bubbly. Of course, that's going to cook. You know, it's going to cook your meat some more. It's going to cook your mushrooms and your onions some more. Uh, so, you don't want to overcook. So, for this, if you're going to freeze this like I am, you want to kind of undercook your food a little bit because it's going to cook again, you know, when you take it out. Uh, when you take it out and put it in your oven, it's going to cook it a little bit more. So it's better to be undercooked right now than to be overcooked, especially overcooked or you know, cook to the exact way that you want it because if you cook it now to the exact way that you want it, when you pop, when you put it in the oven, uh, you take it out of the freezer and you put it in the oven to heat it up for supper, it, you're going to overcook it to your liking. I mean, this is totally, you know, totally up to you. If you want your beef, you know, if you like it not hardly cooked as much, which Normally we do. I mean, you know, when we go out and get a steak, both of us get it medium rare. Uh, so, I'm not going to cook this hardly. I'm going to leave a little pink on it. And, uh, and you add a little bit of salt and pepper to it. But yeah, I'm going to leave a little bit of pink on this because I we don't like our steak, you know, well done. So, alright, so that's done. And now, we get to put these together and get them in the freezer to flash freeze. And uh, then I'll bring you guys back. It'll be this afternoon. <clears throat> Excuse me. It'll be later this afternoon. I'm going to get these in the... Uh, put together and put them in the freezer for flash freezing and uh, then it'll be this afternoon when I get them in my um, vacuum sealer. Ha! Huh, shoo! Mine went blank there. So, I'm going to show you guys how to put them together. Alright y'all. So, you want to get a cookie sheet or a baking dish, whatever you want to use. You make sure that it'll fit in your freezer. I, trust me, I done that one time. I didn't realize we have a side by side refrigerator, so you know the freezers aren't as uh, roomy. <laughs> Put it that way. Um, and I didn't even think about it. I had my big uh, baking sheet out, and I put my stuff on it, and I went to put it in the freezer, and it wouldn't fit. And I'm like, ha, oh, shoot! So, uh, get you. Make sure that your baking dish, your uh, baking sheet, whatever it is that you're using, really, whatever it is that you're using to place your, uh, place your peppers on it, hey, you two, uh, whatever you're using to place your peppers on and put them in the freezer to flash freeze, just make sure it'll fit in your freezer, guys. All right, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put me some onions and mushrooms inside my pepper. Okay. 
Then, I'm going to put me some steak on top. And, you know, get them stuck down in there if you can, guys. If you can, that's much better. And there you go, just like that. So you put them on your cookie sheet, and you put them in the freezer to flash freeze. And then once, they're, once they are flash froze, if you're going to use them right away, you know, you don't have to use a vacuum sealer. Oh. Uh, or not right away, but, you know, within a few weeks, if you're going to use them, uh... You don't, you know, you don't have to have a vacuum sealer. You can put them in freezer bags and put them in the freezer. Um, but I definitely highly recommend a uh, vacuum sealer. Now this one's going to be a little harder to stuff because, you know, I, the bottom of it was kind of, it wasn't very, it was not good. So I had to cut it away. Like I was saying earlier, you know, the bigger they are, like that one, that first one that I done, the easier they are to stuff. But anyway, so if you're going to put this in your freezer, you know, if it's something that you're not going to use for a while, you know, I'm talking like uh, a month or so, then uh, you definitely want to get you a vacuum sealer. Because it is going to freeze or burn if you don't have it. You know, just regular freezer bags aren't going to, they only work for just a few weeks. Alright guys, so there we go. Those are ready to go in the freezer to flash freeze. Uh, and you can see I had just enough of the mushrooms and onions and just enough of the meat. And whoopsie. And that's what they look like, guys. So I'm gonna put those in the freezer and let them flash freeze. And then I will get them vacuum sealed and I will bring you guys back and show you how I do that. Alright, guys. So it's later on this afternoon. Uh, my peppers have uh, froze, flash froze, and uh, of course it's gonna—they're gonna be like the, you know, the bagel, the little mini bagel pizzas that I made. Uh, they're gonna be like that as far as like the meat staying on. I mean, I'm not gonna pull on it because these are froze. Uh, that one is, but like this one here is not you can see you know part of it's fell off that's okay that's fine just put it in your bag uh if you don't have a vacuum sealer you're gonna put it in freezer bags just put it in your freezer bags and when you pull it out to cook it just put the meat back on the pepper that it goes on and stick it in the oven now these like i said before are not the recipe that i'm using is not like a freezer recipe i am just do putting them in the freezer myself so, uh, I will link the recipe down below so you guys can use that. And it will tell you how long it needs to cook for and everything. Um, if you're not freezing it. Let me see here real quick. Let me go into it. Hold on. Y'all know how it is when you find a recipe. Uh, on uh, Pinterest. You got to scroll down through all the other stuff before you find the tells you how to do it <laughs> so anyways all right so if you do not freeze these if you just fix them you know uh fix them right away then you want to bake them at 400 for 25 minutes now as far as freezing them I don't know how it's going to work. Me, myself, I've got them on. I will say I've got them on my menu for next week. And I think I went ahead and put them on the next week too. Uh, because there's, uh, of course I had three peppers and I cut them in each one in half. So that made six peppers. So that'll be two meals for us. Because that would be one for Rob, one for me. And then he t always takes leftovers, leftovers for lunch the next day. So, uh, anyway, so I... 
am going to try to, what I'm thinking I'm going to do is I'm going to put, take them out of the freezer and put them in the refrigerator the night before I make them. Hopefully I remember to do that. If I don't remember to do that, then I'm going to take them out the morning of and put them in the refrigerator and just let them thaw. And then come supper time or come time for me to stick them in the oven and cook them, we'll see what it's like and I'll see how long it takes to cook them. Now as far as that, if you... If you want to know how that is, like I said before, come jo join our group on Facebook, Little Acres Homestead, and I will be posting on there uh, the finished product as far as what it looks like after, you know, when we sit down to eat it and how long it's taken me to cook them and all that good stuff. So, um, also these, when you go to uh, fix them, when you go to put them in the oven to, to cook them, you uh, put a slice of provolone cheese on top of each one or you can put whatever kind of cheese you want but the that's just I'm just telling you what the recipe says guys it says provolone cheese if you want mozzarella put mozzarella if you want cheddar put cheddar totally up to you so let hold on you all done okay sorry she's handing me her snack <laughs> all right so i'm gonna get these in my vacuum seal and get them uh sealed up and in the freezer ready for next week and the next week suppers so there's two suppers that i'm gonna have ready all i gotta do is take them out you know thaw them take them out put them in the refrigerator let them thaw and then come supper time or come time to bake them put them on a cookie sheet pop them in the oven supper's ready so all right all right, I have labeled my uh, bags, you see, and I always put the number, when I whatever I put in there, I put how many I've put. Um, if you're going to put these in the freezer for longer than I'm putting them in the freezer for, you might want to date them so that way you can remember how long they've been in there. I'm gonna pop this in my freezer and when I the, like I said the night before or if I can remember it <laughs> or the morning of I'm gonna take this out of the freezer and I am going to put it in my refrigerator and I'm gonna let it thaw out and uh, then when of the evening uh, you know when it comes time to bake it for supper I'm gonna Bake it up and supper will be ready real quick. Alright guys, so. <laughs> oh me girl. Alright guys, so that's it for this one. Until the next one, bye. <laughs>